Okay. <clears throat> Today's lesson is on polynomial long division. Please remember during this lesson, if it's going too fast for you, you can pause it or even um, go back and rewatch it. All right, so we're going to think back to remembering how to do long division um, back probably when you were in fifth grade. Okay. You're doing 72 divided by 12, so you're going to take 72 divided by 12. And you're trying to figure out 12 times what will give me 72. And it actually is 6, right? 12 times 6 will give me 72. And I subtract, and I have a remainder of 0. Okay? Letter B, 254 divided by 3. In this case, we don't, 3 cannot go into 2, but 3 can go into 25. So 3 times 8 is 24. We subtract, we have one left over, we bring down our four. And then we continue, three goes into 14, four times to give us 12, subtract, and we have a remainder of two. And another way we can write this is 84, our answer is 84. And instead of saying remainder two, we can take this two and say 84 and two thirds. Okay? So our remainder is our numerator and the 3 is going to be our denominator. So these are the two possible answers and they mean the same thing. Let's look at letter C. We now have 8x squared divided by 2. So I have to think 2 times what is going to give me 8x squared? If I do 2 times 4 x squared, I should get 8x squared with remainder of 0. Okay, so it's not much different even though we have a variable. We're just saying 2 times what will give me 8x squared. Now let's label what these numbers are in, in the when we're doing division. Okay, so the 3x squared, if you recall, is our quotient. And our 10x squared is our dividend. And our 1x squared here is our remainder. And what we're dividing by is our divisor. Okay, so when we use these terms, you'll know which part we're talking about. And if I have this division right here, I can then check my answer by saying the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder will give me my dividend. So in this case, the quotient is 3x squared, and the divisor is 3, and the remainder is x squared. So if I do 3x squared times 3, I get 9x squared plus x squared, and my final answer would be 10 x squared, and indeed it is our dividend. So that's another way you can check to make sure you're doing this properly. Okay, how do we write the quotient, the quotient and the remainder? Again, for this one we would say 3x squared remainder of x squared. As a polynomial expression, we would write it as 3x squared plus x squared divided by 3. Remember, our, our remainder is our numerator, and our divisor is our denominator. So two ways we can write it. Okay. So important things to remember when we're dividing polynomials. One, polynomials must be in standard form before you can begin dividing. Okay, so that's standard form is the decreasing de degree. Number two, all terms must be included. So if you have an x to the fourth, then you must have an x to the third. If there isn't an x to the third term, write zero x to the third for the missing term. And that would be the same for if you're missing an x squared or an x. You must put a zero x or x squared, whatever term is missing, to hold that place. Number three, repeat the process of divide, multiply, and subtract until no more divisions can be made. And step four, place each term in the quotient directly above its counterpart in the dividend. 
Okay, so for example, if you have an x squared, put it directly above the x squared term that is in the dividend. Okay, so you want to match it up. All right, once we know the guidelines, we can begin doing some division. Number one x squared minus 12x plus 25 That's my dividend. Oops, I need to leave some space here. Okay. So I have x squared minus 12x, and we're doing it a second degree polynomial but by a, um, dividing it by a first degree binomial. Okay, so x squared minus 12x plus 25 divided by x minus 8. All right, so I'm going to look at x times what will give me x squared, okay, because I'm looking at these two first. And I'm going to say x. So I'm going to put x above the x term, okay? So x times x is x squared. Negative 8 times x is negative 8x and I am subtracting. These should cancel. Then I do negative 12x minus negative 8x, which would give me negative 4x. And I bring down my 25, and I begin again. x times what will give me negative 4x? And I obviously would be negative 4. So x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Negative 8 times negative 4 is positive 32. Again, I need to subtract everything. These should cancel. 25 minus 32 is negative 7. So I have a remainder of negative 7. And I want to write that as a polynomial. So I'm going to say x, I'm going to rewrite this, minus 4 minus, because it's a negative, 7 divided by x minus 8. So that's how we can rewrite it as a polynomial. I also want to check my quotient. So I'm going to take x minus 8, x minus 8 times x minus 4 plus the remainder, which is negative 7. So I must perform FOIL. I'll get x squared minus 12x plus 32 minus 7 to give me x squared minus 12x plus 25. And that is indeed what I start, began with. Okay. Let's do numbers 2 and 3. Okay, I'm taking divide a third degree polynomial, third degree, by a first degree binomial. So I have negative 5x cubed. Oops, it's not in standard form, so I'm going to change it to be in standard form. So negative 24x squared plus 28x minus 48 divided by x plus 6. So again, I'm going to think x times what would give me negative 5x cubed? And it would be negative 5x squared. I'm going to put it above the 5x, or the x squared, and I multiply it. I should get negative 5x cubed. 6 times negative 5x squared is negative 30x squared. And I must subtract. So these will cancel. Negative 24x squared minus negative 30x makes this positive. Okay. And we get 6x squared plus 28x, okay, because we're bringing that guy down. I'm going to extend it like that. And we have to bring this term down as well. Okay, so we don't forget it later on. You could leave it up there, but just so we're carrying it all the way down here. All right, now we have to think x, x times what gives me 6x squared? And it would be 6x. So 
so I get minus 6x squared, then 6 times 6x is plus 36x. 6x squared minus 6x would cancel. 28x minus 36x gives me negative 8x. Bring down the 48. Now I have to think. X, hard to see that now, X times what gives me negative 8X? And it would be minus 8. And then I multiply, so I get negative 8X. 6 times negative 8 is minus 48. If they're identical and you subtract, they should get a remainder of 0. Okay, and we're going to write it as a polynomial. So we would have negative 5X squared, which is our quotient plus 6x minus 8, and there is no remainder, so we can leave it. We don't need to put plus 0. That would be our final answer. All right, let's do number 3. We're taking a fourth degree polynomial divided by a first degree binomial. So I have x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 4x squared, and I'm missing the x term, so I'll say plus 0x minus 6, and it is in standard form, divided by x minus 4. So now x times what gives me x to the fourth? The x to the third. So I then subtract, I multiply, x times x to the third is x to the fourth, negative 4 times x to the third is minus 4x cubed, these cancel. Negative 3x cubed minus negative 4x makes this positive, so you have a positive x cubed. Bring down the negative 4x squared. Okay, you can bring them all down, but if you want to save yourself some time, just bring down the next term. Then I'll do x times what gives me x cubed. It'll be x squared. So x cubed minus 4x squared. And I'm actually going to get 0. That's okay. I'm going to bring down my 0x. And I'm going to bring down my negative 6 this time because x times what will give me 0x would be 0. Okay. And I realize I can't do x into negative 6. So I re realize I have a remainder of negative 6. And then I want to write that as a polynomial. So I'll say my quotient, x cubed plus x squared minus 6 divided by the divisor, which was x minus 4. Okay. Well, two more problems on the next page. Divide a secondary polynomial by a first degree binomial. Okay, we have 14x cubed minus 25x squared minus 43x plus 45 divided by 2x minus 5. Okay, we have a 2x here, which is a little bit different. So now we have to think 2x times what will give me 14x cubed, and it would be 7x squared. So I will have subtract 14x cubed Negative 5 times 7x squared is negative 35x squared. Subtract. This will turn positive because of subtraction, so you have a positive 10x squared. Bring down my negative 43x. Okay. 2x times what gives me 10x squared? It would be plus 5x. So I subtract. 10x squared. Negative 5 times 5x is negative 25x. And this will give me negative 18x, and I'm going to bring down my 45. Okay, I brought this down. And now I'm going to do 2x times what gives me negative 18x, and that will be negative 9. So I get negative 18x plus 45, and I'll again have a remainder of 0, which is great. So I can write my polynomial as is, which is 7x squared plus 5x minus 9.
Okay, we have one more. This one's the um, has now a third degree polynomial divided by a trinomial. That's what's different. We've been doing it by binomials, and now we're going to do a trinomial. Let me do a red now. I have x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. Oops, I'm going to scoot this over. Make sure I have enough room. And then I write x squared plus 4x plus 3. So x squared times what will give me x cubed, and it will be x. So I'm going to put it above the x term. I always like to match line it up. And then I subtract, and I get x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x. I subtract. These will cancel. That's always the goal. 3x squared minus 4x squared gives me negative x squared. Negative x minus 3x will give me negative 4x. Bring down my 3 x squared times what will give me negative x squared minus 1. So now I have negative x squared minus 4x minus 3, remainder of 0. Okay, so my polynomial, my quotient, is just x minus 1 with no remainder. Okay, if you're still confused, please, again, you can rewatch it, pause it, slow it down, whatever you need to do. Thank you very much.